Hi everybody, welcome to Witness My Minis. I'm Peter. Today we frame 40k. I hope you all know the amazing person Roman Lapat. Not only did he win a Golden Demon a Slayer Sword, he is just a wonderful person in the hobby. My paths crossed with Roman for the first time about a year ago when he helped me to sculpt trophies for Butterfly for Hannah. If you don't know what that is, I will put links in the description so you can check out for yourselves. Long story short, he was one of the first to reach out and support the project. And that just goes to show the amazing and caring person he is behind his amazing artwork. And speaking about his amazing artwork, take a look at these amazing pieces that he's making. When it comes to miniature dioramas, I think he is one of the best there is out there. And some time ago, he tried a new style of diorama and boy, did he deliver on that. First time I saw it, I knew that I had to try to make one myself. So yeah, here we go. This is my try at a framed miniature diorama. So it all starts with finding the right kind of frame. I've been looking at flea markets. I've been in secondhand stores. I've been all over the place not finding the, the right kind of frame that Roman has on his projects. And I really want the same kind of frame, you know? I ended up finding two of them on eBay for a really good price. So I just snatched them up. This being my first attempt at this, I thought that I would try to emulate an existing artwork like Roman did when he did the Death Dealer. Oh, look at this amazing piece of art that he recreated. It's so inspiring. So I thought I'd go for that. So the next step in this process was to find an artwork that I could emulate. I thought it would be fitting to do something Warhammer 40k. So I started browsing the internet, just googling um, Warhammer 40k artwork and trying to find something that I liked and that would fit my small frame that I would begin with. I ended up finding this amazing looking Ultramarine. Of course, such a classic, also an amazing and dynamic scene that I thought would be interesting in trying to copy. The next step was acquiring the miniature itself. And I actually found a kit that wouldn't require that much kitsch bashing that I could just repose and try to get the right kind of feel for the diorama. When everything was acquired, it was time to get to work. The scene in the foreground of the picture is a rather abstract one, and I try to interpret it with different materials and shapes. I do not assemble the mini as I usually do. First of all, I see if I can get the same pose in the picture. The pose of the sword is the big difference and I try to get the arm in the same position without needing to cut it apart. Also the cape, I try a long time to get it in the same way as in the picture and at one point I also try to sculpt one myself. But in the end, I end up with this. Once I feel I got everything in place, I prime it black and after that it really feels like it's coming together. I always find that after priming, you get your first glance of how much potential a piece have, seeing everything not like individual parts anymore, but as something coherent. And now it's time for colors. After priming it black, I go back and spray it with white from the same angle as the space marine is lit from the picture. This way I make sure I have a roadmap to follow when going in with the brush. After I primed it all black, I go in with very white spots where all the glowing bits will be. I then glaze this with yellows and oranges. And for all the other parts, I put all of my earthy tones on my wet palette and I just go crazy. The important thing here is to make sure that the brightest points where I airbrushed is only glazed with the, my brightest colors and then going in with transitions to oranges and then reds and all of the other ones uh, trying to get a mixture and trying to define the volumes of the surroundings with dark colors contrasting the bright ones. So to make sure that it feels really hot, I make sure to place dark corners and dark areas close to the bright ones so that they really, really pop. Before starting on the backdrop, I place my mini and I actually spray with my airbrush 
the sword so that I get a OSL effect on the backdrop. Because I have a backdrop, I can actually for once have an OSL effect around the blade. Painting the backdrop was so freaking scary. I am not in any way a 2D painter, but I, I thought like, F it, let's just go for it. I have to try something, right? And the size I had to paint it on was so freaking small. I, I didn't think it would be this tight, to be honest. But uh, I just had to like squeeze the artwork together and try to get the same feel in there. So as usually, I had to think like, what is the most important thing of the background? And I ended up thinking, the colors is one of the most important thing so that the miniature and the background has contrast like in the picture and also that the atmosphere stays consistent uh, with the artwork. And then there's depth. Trying to get some depth in the tornadoes and the tilting of the horizon so that it didn't feel too flat. Putting the mini in place, I feel really happy with my results so far. And to be honest, kind of afraid to keep working <laughs> in case I destroy it. So as for the mini, after the white ink, I glazed the armor down with a ultramarine blue from scale 75 range. The red Citadel contrast paint. After that, I sprayed the whole mini with a purple, hitting all the shadow uh, from below and in between, just to get uh, the same shadow color all across the mini. As for the gold parts, I started with a dark brown color. I used heavy body acrylics. Uh, to be more specific, scale 75 artist range that I just tried out in my recent video when I tried out Craftful Studios style. You can find that video up in the corner right now. Now that everything has a base color, I have to put a gloss varnish on. And this is because I plan to use an oil wash to get a definition in all of the uh, shadows. So because the colors that I've used so far is very matte, the oil wash would actually stain the matte colors more. After the mini is glossy, I dilute my oil paint very much. I use an, a blue indigo color and some black to get a really dark pin wash out of this. I then go all around the mini and try to get in, in all the recesses, not trying to slab it on or get it dirty, but rather trying to stay as clean as I can. And when it's dried, I go in with a Q-tip and some white spirit and I can clean up any mistakes that I've made. When I'm satisfied with this step, I just go over with a matte varnish again and then we can continue by brush and matte acrylics. So with painting the red cape, I have found a particular recipe that I like using when it comes to this kind of bright red. I tend to do the same contrast paint that I mentioned before and then going over it with Chimera, the red, because it's such a bright color and basically I don't have to do any more highlights after this. The contrast that I already put down works as a gray base and the vibrant red from Chimera, it's, it's magic. I don't want the cape to feel too smooth as in the picture, it, it's kind of rugged. So I do go in with stippling motions here to, to uh, roughen it up and to have some kind of texture in there. I was going back and forth on if I should be doing NMM or if I should be doing TMM on this mini. But I ended up with NMM because I can force the perspective quite a lot more. So what I'll do is I'll use the artwork as a map on where to put the highlights. I will not try to be specifically clean or anything like that on this. I'm just trying to evoke the same kind of emotion. And quite frankly, if you look at the artwork, I mean, you can basically see brushstroke on the artwork as well. So I just make sure that the highlights are in the same place and from the same angle. I try to get all of my colors out, mix them on the wet palette so I can easily have access to all of my different tones. And then I just go all around the mini trying to get that contrast that is shown in the picture. The lower part of the mini is of course very dulled down and the chest area and above his head is more pronounced, drawing the focus that we want. So if you like what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, hit the bell button, and please comment down below. What would you like? Any artwork that you would want to see replicated? I really want to know because this is not the last time that I do one of these, let me tell you that.
when it comes to my ultramarine, I edge highlight some parts to make it more readable. But then with the with the armor, I, what I do is basically take the same blue that I already have put on the mini and I mix it with the red so I get a purple color that speaks the same language as the blue that I can use as a shadow color. I then shade and do filters all around the mini to make it even more readable. I also do some freehand on the knee and I place a decal on his, his shoulder so that he has this, the right markings as seen in the picture. On the blade, I go in with a pure white around the edges so that the OSL effect on the backdrop really speaks. I also put a small OSL effect on the environment in front of the blade. I know it's not in a picture, but it really sells the effect even more. And here you have him, the Bane of Gargamel, the bluest of the Smurfs, my Ultramarine Captain in my first ever framed miniature diorama. If you want to support my work, I am on Patreon. You have the, the links in the description down below. Thanks a million guys for watching. Bye.